Yeah, good day. Uh, just uh, back to the sandblaster again. I'll just do a part two video of this because uh, uh, there's a couple little bits uh, inside you probably want to see. I want to check out, and so I decided uh, I haven't serviced it in about a year, so uh, we'll give it a service, eh? And uh, pull the bits apart, clean it out. But um, for the video purpose, I'll show you the bits inside, like the, the baffle tube down the bottom of there, and I stick this on, and uh, yeah, a couple of things about the air. But, uh, I'll get straight through it. Yeah, this thing actually just sits in the back, okay? The whole thing just sits up there by itself. Um, and I've got a flange in the back. So all I do is take off this one here, just pull him out. I've got one hose out of here, that's just the old vacuum cleaner doodle there. And then this one, so all I do is lift the flange out of the back there, and then just Bring the whole thing down. It's sitting down back there. So you see the garnet sitting in there, okay? It's actually being drawn right into the tube and it's sort of constricts it a little bit, but once the action gets going, this keeps the sand, the heavier stuff keeps falling back down into the cabinet, okay? And the lighter stuff keeps getting sucked up. Up the, the larger diameter tube, alright? So, it's got a little flange on the end there, just with the PVC bits and the glue. We just take out the guts. Turn the lid around. Turn it around. And she just unscrews off the barrel. That's it. And then we've got... And this is the uh, perforated tube. Okay. And that turns all the big bubbles into little bubbles. And in each little bubble, when the water touches it, it picks up the dirt off that. Because if you have one big bloop bubble come out, the water only touches the outside of the bubble. It doesn't touch the sand inside before the bubble rises to the top. So you separate it all, diffuse it all, and then all the little bubbles contact the water, and the water takes the dust out of the little bubbles, and then they all rise to the top. And then finally you get a little bit but uh, that's like, you know, um, two years sitting in there like that. So, you know, we get some residual comes through it. As I said, that's a little splash guard. So this perforated stuff. So I just use some of this. So I just got some perforated sheet like that. And then I just cut off a strip and rolled it around. Put a hose clamp on the tube, you know, to squash it down and then peened over the top of it to seal it off. So it's got holes, you know, facing out. The holes aren't facing out the sides so much. It's out of the bottom, really. Yeah, so it just gets a nice hole to diffuse all the, uh, the big air, air gulps in that. Just remember the water, you know, goes up the tube. The air pulls it down, it goes bloop, and then the water runs up the tube again, then it pulls it down, so it constantly does this big bubble action at the end. You know, the air's not just rushing out of the end of it, you see. You gotta remember that, so that's how you get the bloop 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 sound out of your air brake because it's you know gulping this big bubble of air. So just a bit of mesh breaks it up nicely, and then the water touches much more of the uh, air inside and takes off a lot more of the dust. See the uh, flange nuts, they just screw on the bottom of the lid on the top. I said splash shield. And a little bit of venting there. So there's some really, just some slightly fine mud that's come up to as far as the vacuum cleaner pull. The vacuum cleaner pick up here for the top. Just very fine, like clay almost. And uh, yeah, the perforated tube. I just put a big long bit on so that the bugger wouldn't fall off. Another little bit of radiator hose to join that to that spigot. The thread coming out. And a couple of clamps on it. So it's, you know, on there, and then we go to the other side. The other side there, which goes up to our PVC on the wall. And as I showed you before, nice and thick. Yeah, nice and thick. You can see down the bottom of the water, there's a, uh, yeah, big pancake of slime. Okay. So we just drain off the water, off the top of that pancake of slime, 
and then scoop the slime out in. And when I let it dry, um, all that material, there just won't be any heavy, um, you know, thick garnet in it. It is all absolute clay, super soft uh, dust, which is all of the stuff that comes off what you're sandblasting, as well as the broken up bits of uh, garnet, the bits that break off the garnet stone itself, leaving the garnet stone back in the box, which uh, this is very important part of the uh, of the uh, sandblaster dust extraction systems uh, because if you have enough vacuum to suck out all the medium you're sucking out all the 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 the, the, uh, the blast media out of the uh, box so you have to keep topping that up and if you don't take the dust out uh, what happens is that the dust mixes the fine dust mixes with the the garnet stone the thicker garnet stone and that really fine dust absorbs moisture so it turns into clumps and the clumps block up the damn pickup of the of the thing oh so having the vertical large tube separating the large stuff from the small stuff the large stuff is the media we want to keep in the cabinet and the small stuff we want to get out of the cabinet so that it doesn't attract moisture and clump up and block the tube um, so uh, that's what it does uh, no, that's sort of a key part in um, sandblasters so if you have a look at a really really expensive sandblaster box what you'll see is a big chamber behind or underneath it that does pretty much the same function as that and if your sandblaster hasn't got that then uh, it's essentially missing a bit of it but you can make it out of cheap PC, you know, PVC tube stormwater tube glue it together and uh, you don't have to uh, spend a whole heap of money just to uh, have a sandblaster with that uh, that feature in it that separates the fine from the heavy, the, the fine from the coarse. Um, so that's why uh, at the end of it, you know, we're not losing any medium out of the media out of the cabinet, the gun out of the cabinet, and the dust is slowly building up in this. So we only have to open it up every year or two years and and. Um, Scoot the muck out, put some water back in it, screw it back on, and away we go again. And uh, we don't get any block ups in the pickup tube of the sandblaster because all the fine dust is gone from inside of it. And the fine dust that, uh, you know, clumps. Okay, put a heap of water in there. Yeah. So the water will be uh, from the top of the lip. The water will be here, downwards, okay? So just the tip, all right, not the whole deal. All right. And I just put that mesh down there, so it's just a little splash shield over the top, and it just kind of sits above the water line. Just spread it out a bit inside. That's the stuff, okay? And it is just jelly, jelly jinker pot. So the water drains down and uh, you know, I'll just uh, scoop a bit of it out, but it just dries out. But I don't know if you can see the color of it, but it's not the, uh, the goldy brown color of the garnet. It's a gray, uh, almost a gray blue color. And that is, uh, in part, the uh, rusty uh, bits of steel, uh, the metal, 
and a lot of that uh, blue on the RHS tube that gets knocked off so it's turning sort of a bluey grey grey colour but uh, no doubt it gets a little bit of garnet up there uh, I'm sure but um, it sure doesn't um, suck much up there so that's pretty good um, the connecting tube between the big between the big tube and the uh, and the cabinet itself uh, it could probably be a larger size um, right down to the cabinet so that would help get the garnet down uh, back in the cabinet a bit better than my one if you're going to do that now you really got you got to have a water separator as close to the cabinet as possible uh, because uh, when the hot air you know comes out of the compressor the compressed air it cools down turns into liquid um, so you know and that occurs in the hose between the air compressor so even if you take the water out back at the air compressor you're still going to get condensation in the hose between the air compressor and the and the box so um, the best place to have the water separator is up right next to the cabinet and a very short hose between the cabinet and the and the air regulator because that's you see it's constantly I don't know if you can see it's constantly got water in it you know when it's running uh, so there yeah, that catches a lot of water and uh, we can't go straight from the tank we've got to have a regulator because we've got to have a pressure differential to cause the separation of water in here you know if the pressure on both sides of the regulator is the same it's not going to catch water so the compressor side's got to be a fraction higher on here so that this is catching water here before it actually hits the uh, the compressor box and uh, somebody uh, Brad asked me about the uh, tool bit there okay um, the trigger there uh, how did you bypass that okay I just took the, uh, the, the the screw out okay and just took all the pin and muck out and the spring and just jammed it back and now it's yeah so it's just open all full time okay and it hasn't got the pin in there uh, I mentioned on the trigger but actually the trigger there has got a little pin inside here alright and then there's another arrangement in here that actually cuts off the flow of air so I just took that out of inside there so this just pushes in and it doesn't leak air out the front of there so um, yeah that's how we get rid of the the confounded trigger because without the trigger you can actually hold it in you know I mean you can hold it by the hose like that if you want to and do stuff you know it's just better not to have a trigger up there aside from the fact that the thing jammed all the time in there um, yeah ball valve and just uh, yeah with the foot there it's easy enough so that uh, takes care of controlling the um, the air so you can uh, yeah keep shutting that off when you're not uh, actually blasting something and that way you keep the air up in the compressor yeah tube size you know uh, you want a tube that's big enough if you've got a bigger vacuum cleaner as well all right and I'm your bigger cabinet and you're really sucking a lot of air um, you know you don't want the airspeed in here getting up too high and starting to pull the heavy materials up so you know you could double the size of that tube if you can get it you might as well make it bigger um, just gonna say before here I've got probably too many bends in here and I get a bit of accumulation fills up in here and the hole gets a bit small and it keeps dragging it up so you could probably make this you know a little bit of a smaller uh, even steeper actually if it can come you know if I did it again I'd probably go at an angle into the cabinet so that it's got a, a steep slope all the way down into the cabinet and then you know slides back down and doesn't jam in here so that's another improvement uh, that you could do if you were going to make one and uh, yeah so I think that uh, just about covers it for Sandy and it's serviced and now I just don't have to look at the dust extraction for uh, you know another year or more um, yeah I hope you uh, found it informative if uh, you would uh, like to uh, hit the little button down there and subscribe to my channel that would be uh, much appreciated so uh, yeah signing out for today and uh, we'll see you in the next video catch you later